Good morning, Rockingham and Bells Falls. Hi, Marty. How you doing? Oh, happy March. Um, yeah, happy March. The 3rd of March. We, we made it through February. We're into March. Yesterday was a little scary, but... <laughs> I know. What a difference 24 hours makes. Yeah. Wow. Um, Welcome to The Feed, first show in March. Today we're going to talk with Mike Obahowski and Deb Wright about testing autonomous vehicles in Bellows Falls. But first, Marty's going to give us some local news and uh, election results. Yeah, so yesterday um, was the official town voting day. And as we all know, there was quite a few candidates that ran for the select board seats that were open. And we'd like to give a big congratulations to the three winners. Bonnie North won the three-year seat. And Rick Cowan and Elijah Zimmer both are serving one-year seats on the select board. I want to give a huge congratulations to them, and I want to give an even better, bigger shout-out to everybody that ran, yes. everybody that participated in the candidate spotlights that we did and the, and the candidate forum. I think that um, the group of people that ran are movers and shakers in, in um, the town, in the village, and I think kudos to them for putting themselves out there and also for staying involved and being as involved as they were. Yes, I agree totally. It was a fantastic group, and I wanted to thank um, all of the people who have served and are willing to serve mm -hmm. because it is no easy job. It and, is not a walk in uh, the park. <laughs> man, I, I just, my heart goes out to you, and I want to thank you. Um, I also I heard that the, all the budgets passed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the margins were or anything, but... Um, that's what we have for our news. We want to go to uh, Mike Obahowski, who's the Principal Assistant for Planning in the Agency of Transportation, and Deb uh, Wright, who's sort of um, honchoing this project in Bellows Falls. And we're going to talk about Bellows Falls becoming eligible to be a testing site for autonomous vehicles. Which is exciting. Pretty neat. Let's say hi to our guests. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you doing? Glad to be here. <laughs> Are you in in Montpelier now? Yes, I am. Okay. So the one I've spent the last <laughs> 10 years of my existence uh, in Montpelier working for state government in uh, a commissioner capacity and now uh, working for the Agency of Transportation. Great. Thank you. And Deb Wright is here. She's here this morning um, on behalf of the town and village. Uh, hi, Deb. Good morning, folks. Thank you for doing this. This is great. Yeah, Good morning, um, Mike. and Good you're morning. sort of, Deb, are you sort of heading this project as far as on the local level? Is that? I'd say I'm the go-getter. I'm the yeah. person who is most excited about this, reached out to um, the program from, back from the end of, geez, 2019, I think, wanting to um, offer an open conversation about Bellows Falls and or Rockingham being uh, part of this program and as a testing site. Yes. Yeah, great. Thank you for doing that. Um, but we have a little video we're going to start with, and um, if Alex is going to help us out here, he's going to, we're going to start the video and get an idea of what autonomous vehicle testing is. Approved in 2019, the Vermont Automated Vehicle Testing Act allows for the testing of automated vehicles on public roads in Vermont. With the state's four seasons, historic covered and floating bridges, scarcity of road markings, and the occasional blizzard, Vermont's mix of state and municipal roadways provides a unique and challenging testing environment in a rugged and rural terrain. With a robust and active tourism industry, Vermont is filled with potential test use cases, like autonomously chauffeured food and craft beer tours, scenic leaf peeping, and even using AVs to transport skiers from lodging and remote parking rides to the slopes. Automated vehicles would be a huge boon in supplying mobility to folks in rural and remote areas, where public transportation can be all too hard to come by. In addition to reducing fatal crashes and increasing vehicle and occupant safety, automated vehicles could also have a positive impact on healthcare, helping people with low vision or other disabilities that may not be able to drive reach important appointments on time, while saving the current system millions of dollars. EV testing requires a huge level of trust between the tester and the road owner. Thankfully, Vermont is a special place where the number of Vermonters is small enough to care. The Vermont Way provides for cooperation, collaboration, and communication, all elements which build trust, breed understanding, and help in educating the public. If you decide to test in Vermont, you'll find yourself treated not as some nameless entity, but as a partner in pursuit of automated vehicle operational safety. 
We believe it is essential that all Vermonters have access to this technology and its potential safety and economic value. We want to be partners in ensuring that safety and success. Automated vehicles in Vermont will improve safety for Vermonters and result in fewer deaths on our roads. Automated vehicles in Vermont will support redevelopment and infill of downtowns by reducing needed parking. Automated vehicles will provide independence and access to jobs, goods, and services for people who cannot drive. Automated vehicles in Vermont will mean mobility for our senior citizens. Automated vehicles in Vermont will make Vermont attractive to new businesses and residents and supports the modernization of mobility for Vermonters and our visitors. With the cooperative attitudes of the Vermont Department of Motor Vehicles and the Agency of Transportation, we aim to be a leader in the testing of automated vehicles in small towns, rural areas, challenging weather, and terrain. We trust your experience will be sweet. That's great. That was a great video. Very good. I see Deb got to get do a cameo there. <laughs> nice, nice, nice job, Deb. That's true, thanks. Um, so what we're talking about today, though, is and in, in the in the this month is basically getting Bellows Falls on the list of approved testing sites. Is that am I interpreting yes. that? Yes. Springfield was the first. Um, they jumped right on it because they do a lot of technological things, and they want that's part of their desires to move forward and that's what they're doing um rockingham slash Bellas falls um, would be a secondary site and not sure when it will happen but we want to be able to provide services for our ne needed seniors um our young people who choose not to own vehicles these days and want to work from home a lot of it is being done a lot of jobs being done um at home as opposed to online as opposed to in person and give them access when you know we have limited parking, we're not going to get any bigger, can't extend over the Connecticut River, I think this would be a boon for us in many ways. Oh, I agree. Mike, um, What, from the state's perspective, what are they looking for for test sites and how that works? We are looking at this point for anyone who wants to uh, pre-approve testing by passing a resolution at their select board level uh, they would be pre-approved for testing and then uh, what we do with that uh, fact is put them on a list uh, that testers can take a look at and uh, determine whether or not they want to test in that particular area or not. Um, so far, uh, as Deb indicated, uh, the town of Springfield has taken that opportunity uh, they are doing it on the basis, really, of an economic uh, economic development uh, tool that they think that their uh, brick program, which is high-speed internet and software developers and so on and so forth, uh, would be very uh, synergistic with. Uh, efforts uh, to bring testing to Vermont. It's been a long road, uh, excuse the pun, uh, to get to <laughs> where we are. Uh, and people like uh, Deb Wright and uh, Mike Martin in Springfield have been real leaders uh, in their towns to uh, help uh, their town decide uh, to become pre-approved. Um, our experience is that you need somebody in the town uh, to take up uh, the mantle of getting the pre-approval, uh, and that's where we're at. Um, we are the agency of transportation and the local public officials on the 11th of March from 7 to 9 o'clock in the evening are sponsoring a meeting uh, for the public to become better informed um, about this uh, effort. So I have kind of a burning question because I didn't quite understand. I didn't know anything about autonomous vehicles. I didn't know that they were even becoming possible. 
Is there literally nobody driving the autonomous vehicle? I don't understand that. That might be the silliest question of the day, but it's the one that struck me. That's correct. Uh, there is no one driving the vehicle uh, in the pure sense. Uh, in Vermont, the legislature passed legislation in June of 2019, and what that legislation provided for is that if an autonomous vehicle was being tested in the state of Vermont, it had to have uh, a test driver over the age of 21, properly trained uh, and outfitted uh, to be able to take over control of the vehicle uh, should uh, the vehicle disengage. But essentially, uh, what the dream is, and people are investing all kinds of money uh, around the world. In China, uh, there are already, uh, they can call them taxis that go around and uh, cart people around, uh, and there are no drivers uh, in the vehicles. And that's what makes it exciting uh, from several standpoints. You could say, well, there's no driver. What about the safety aspects of what's going on? A great deal of emphasis is put on safety uh, from the process that has to go through to get the permit. Uh, local towns, uh, they decide to pre-approve uh, are, are given um, several opportunities during the process to opt out if they want to. Uh, if there are technical problems with the vehicles, uh, they can opt out. Uh, it's, in a way, it's a low-risk uh, decision for a town to make because they're adequately uh, protected by the statute. Yeah. Nice. That's interesting. So. Um, <clears throat> Uh, whoever would want, are there groups in Vermont at this time who want to test autonomous vehicles? Are there people saying, oh, we'd like to come to Vermont and test autonomous vehicles or are producing autonomous vehicles in Vermont or in New York? In New York? Well, I, in, the, in the region, are there people, are there companies? <laughs> yes, there, there is uh, testing going on right now down in Boston area. It was testing uh, before COVID going on in Providence, Rhode Island. They had a uh, essentially a bus that brought people from one end of the town to the other, and it was from the rich part of the town to the poor part of the town. And uh, it, it has occurred. Yeah. What we're trying to do is set ourselves up. Uh, to be an entity uh, that testers would want to come to. Um, we spent a lot of time putting together what is called a guidance book. Uh, we are in all the conditions that people have to meet to become a tester are uh, outlined. Uh, and that was approved by the traffic committee last October 15th. So we've really only been in the trying to attract people to do the pre-approval for about four and a half months. And uh, it's been a pretty successful ride thus far. <laughs> Again, pardon the pun, uh, right? You really got the puns, <laughs> you got the puns today, going Michael. today. <laughs> <laughs> so Deb, what do you see, how do you see this working here in town? Like. Um, what would be like? How how far along are you on the on the process of it? And and do you feel that you've got support from the rest of the so select board and the trustees and the um, town manager? I'd say there's there's a small more support than there was at the beginning. Um, I know that Stephen Golick was supposed to be the select board member who was on a working group with me to um, ask questions, pros and cons, to get some of these. Um, fears and, and such can assuage and make people understand so we can get it to the information to the public. However, he was not reelected. Therefore, um, the select board will need to reappoint someone else. Um, the point, the deal is because the town handles the roads, 
And the, vill and the village is interested in, in this program because we have a number of seniors. We have uh, no cabs to get people from the train station and around the village, which would be, which I think is a major piece in order to get tourists um, to see more of the village easily from where they are. You know, short hops and sort of to getting to restaurants and whatever we have open during um, or after the post-pandemic. Um, I think that um, what will happen is because we're having a public forum, basically an opportunity for the public to zoom in um, and ask questions, see information, get answers, um, and also the joint board will be having a meeting on the 30th in which there'll be more questions available to be asked by all board members and uh, by the public. We will get to, to get more and more familiar with the project as it's ongoing. And again, this is for testing. Everyone needs to remember there will always be a driver in the vehicle uh, awaiting an issue if something happens to uh, take over and create a safe environment. We will also have multiple bites of the apple saying yes is not going to preclude us saying no later on down the road when they actually say, hey, we want to come in and review your roads. We know the issues of our own road system. We've seen plenty of it. That's something a tester will have to see for themselves uh, when they come to this tight, close community. But I think it could serve us well if it all works out. And that, again, many bites of the apple, not just one, to say no if things don't look like they should go full, as Mike said. No, I agree with you totally. What if this would be the a, a perfect test bed because it has um, the rural roads, their city, you know, tight streets. They're not straight. They're um, and there's just a variety of conditions. I can't and the weather conditions are always different. I mean, if you're mm -hmm. going to test a vehicle and you're going and it's going to work in the United States, you should come to Bellows Falls. <laughs> yeah. Because boy, it's I mean, yeah. And then you have people coming from out of state that are like crazy drivers that they have to react to. We have some local crazy drivers, too. <laughs> just, you know, just I, shouting that out. Okay. But no, I, I... I do need to... Re I want us to remember <clears throat> that currently vehicles already have some automated features now. Our new vehicles include opportunities to do parallel parking for us, mm -hmm. put us into parking spots, put us out of parking spots, stop in case it comes upon an object. We already have LIDAR in a number of our new vehicles now that is being used. Lane correction, all those things are already available for our drivers in vehicles when unsafe situations occur and difficult situations, like parallel parking, one of the things I actually hate. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, but I, just from the perspective of people I know in town, this would just be a, a godsend because so many people, like I know people that work in this building who have such a hard time getting to work because they don't have a car and they don't have a driver, you know, because they don't have a, a car, they don't have a driver's license and they have to rely on the bus, which doesn't, I mean, it does a great job for what it is, but it's done, it doesn't really meet their needs as far as coming exactly. to work and yep. getting home. And, yeah. I also think that the, the possibility for increased tourism and increased exposure to, so everybody, you know, focuses on, on the downtown and the walkability of the downtown, which is awesome, but we have a lot of nice yeah. places that are just a little bit outside of town. Yes, Saxons River. And Saxons River and places in Westminster and even places across the river that it seems like that would be a, a, a helpful situation if there's, you know, an easy source for tourists to hop on an autonomous vehicle, you know, scoot out to the, ne the next town, you know, go to the Rockingham Meeting House, you know, yeah. just a lot more tourist right. opportunity. Yeah. And I th also a think continuous it's a continuous tour, great. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. And it's a great way to, to uh, attract those younger people from urban areas who don't want to, who want to be green and don't want to necessarily buy a car or do anything, but who have great jobs and who could spend their money here. Yeah, and work at home. Well, we want to take both of you on the road with us as we uh, <laughs> try to convince people. <laughs> Only if we can go in an autonomous vehicle. <laughs> no, I'd love to. Yeah. I think it's, I'm, yeah, you're preaching to the choir for me. It's like, this is just a, uh, an amazing opportunity for Bells Falls and for, just for, in general. Yeah. I mean, I think it harkens back to, I know it's not the same thing, but it harkens back to the old trolley system that we used to have in Bells Falls that, that brought people all over town, right. brought people yeah. out to Barber's Park, and brought people out to Saxon River. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not the same exact thing, but it's kind it's of the really same thing. It's really similar. You know, history repeats itself. It's just the new modern yeah. version. And, and our wider 
vision basis. Uh, one of the things that we've thought about is if we can keep Springfield interested, get Rockingham interested, that maybe we could go from Springfield to Brattleboro and have a, a big test area for oh, people right, to yeah. utilize. And I think it would be appealing to a lot of people because it's a technical uh, kind of economic uh, investment, which usually goes to Chittenden County. <laughs> and we could have that in southeastern Vermont. That would be that would be that good would because be Vermont does exist below Montpelier. Yes, hard <laughs> to my, believe. That's my favorite mantra. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that would be a really that's a diverse, populous center to test in. Yeah, in Brattleboro is way different than Bell's Falls, and Bell's Falls is way different than Springfield. And you have you know, Springfield has the hills. So if you really want to test and see what these things yeah. can do, there's your there's your test market. Mm -hmm. So what do we do, need to do to get signed up here, Mike? Well, I think the primary thing in the town of Rockingham is for the citizens, if they are uh, engaged uh, in this and supportive of it, uh, to let their select board members know so that they can uh, pass uh, a resolution uh, that authorizes pre-approval testing. And it, the attitude that Springfield took is, we're going to do this because we think it's the right thing. And the system is built to protect the towns, uh, allowing them to get out at any point um, for any reason. They can put conditions on the permit uh, and so on and so forth. So I think the most important thing for them to do is to talk to their select board uh, members and also, their trustees who can talk to the select board members. The charter in Rockingham provides that the town uh, is responsible for all the roads. So, if it were if it were going to occur in Bell's Falls only, it is only going to occur that way because the select board said that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, Deb. Um there's a meeting on the 11th, an informational meeting at the town hall, and then there's going to be right. a, another meeting on the 30th? Great. The, um, the 11th meeting is a public forum for everyone to zoom in and ask questions um, concerning these and also to see the commercial that you've just seen um, this morning and to ask additional questions of the presenters. I believe Mike Oboholsky and Joe Sigali will both be there, I think. Is that right, Mike? That's correct. Okay. And that'll be at 7 o'clock to 9 p.m. on the 11th. Okay. Uh, which is the next Thursday? Next Thursday. All right. And on joint, on the joint board of the town and village will be on joint, June, excuse me, on March 30th, starting at the regular time of 6 p.m., which will give the public another opportunity because it's also on our agenda for that joint board meeting to discuss it. I would really like to see a joint resolution between the town and village to take this on, but we'll see how it goes when we get to that meeting, if everyone feels better about it, and maybe um, hopefully the town select board and the village trustees, my other board members will also participate in the public forum on the 11th. Okay. So they can get their questions answered as well. Then so, we can move forward. One of the things, then, we are, then we're on the, on the map, just like Springfield, and we await the pleasure of testers to want to get a permit to test our area and or Springfields, and if we could get, Brattleboro didn't put it on there, um, it's not on their map these days. They haven't added, added that for the annual meeting. It didn't occur. But it might occur, and they could do something about it without necessarily putting it on the ballot, just simply to be able to say yes and find out how long it takes before a tester wants to come to us. One thing I want to make sure to point out is this also, uh, becoming a testing town, might bring more money in our direction from Montpelier um, for our infrastructure to help improve our roads in order to make it safer for AV to travel. Mm -hmm. That's things that I thought about as a side, along seconds. with the fact that they'll get to check all of our road surfaces and maybe we'll even be able to uh, achieve some kind of reporting on some of our difficult areas um, to repair. I think that might be in the future something we could look forward to. Okay. So we are pretty much out of time. It went really, really quickly today. 
Um, I just want to shout out super quickly, if, if you want to reach out to your select board, if you're watching the show, talking to the citizens, Peter Golick is the select board chair, Sue Hammond is the vice chair, the, the three new nominees are Bonnie North, Rick Count, and Elijah Zimmer. We'll make sure we share this show with them so they have a little information Great. ahead of time. And thank you both Mike and Deb for coming, and this is so exciting. Yeah. So we need to get to, need to, get to the 30th and get the resolution done. And then we'll have you back with, for more information. Sound okay. good? Terrific. All right. Good. That's what time we have for today. We'll Bye, community. <laughs> See you next week for the feed. Bye. Bye. Wait a minute.